What's on your radar, Brianna? Well, you know how I'm always saying the most important issues in this country are top down, not left right, right? That it's a big club and you're not in it. How big corporations like the insurance companies and healthcare companies that abandon you when you're sick, the defense contractors that fund endless wars, and the big tech companies that censure you all give to Republicans and Democrats alike to ensure that whatever party wins an election, they are guaranteed to come out on top. Well, a new story about AIPAC, the group founded to lobby American politicians for favorable policies toward the Israeli government, exposes just how thoroughly elites have rigged our political system to undermine your voting power and, in effect, choose American Congress members. You might recall me mentioning in an old radar that Summer Lee, a Pennsylvania progressive, won a tough primary race back in May, despite AIPAC's PAC spending over $2 million against Lee and $660,000 in favor of her centrist establishment opponent in the Democratic Party. AIPAC ads targeted her as not a real Democrat. Let's take a look. She calls herself a Democrat, but Summer Lee said she wanted to dismantle the Democratic Party. Dismantle it. And she's done everything in her power to do just that. When Joe Biden was running against Trump, Summer Lee attacked Biden's character, said he'd take us backwards. And Lee refused to support Biden's infrastructure plan that's now rebuilding bridges and roads in western Pennsylvania. Summer Lee, more interested in fighting Democrats than getting results. UDP is responsible for the content of this ad. Critical of Biden wants to dismantle the warmongering Democratic Party. Honestly, I know that's supposed to be an attack ad, but she'd have my vote. All kidding aside, the valence of APAC's ad is clear. The Democratic Party is good and should be protected, and voters who share that ideology should vote for Lee's opponent. That being the case, how wild is it that APAC is now supporting Lee's Republican opponent in the general election? This story broke over the weekend. APAC, which, as I explained in a recent radar, has tried to put some on the scale against anti-establishment left candidates who are critical of Israel's treatment of Palestinians, is spending nearly $80,000 on Lee's opponent, who just happens to have the same name as the outgoing Democratic representative Mike Doyle. They're literally trying to trick Democratic voters into voting for a familiar name. But of course, this Mike Doyle is a Republican. See, it seems APAC doesn't care who wins, D or R, as long as the candidate is the same type of milquetoast, pro-blob establishment figure that will routinely sign off on unbounded aid packages for Israel, ignoring the apartheid conditions of the Palestinian people. As a reminder, in Gaza, over 1.8 million Palestinians live in just 140 square miles of land in conditions described by former Prime Minister David Cameron as an open-air prison. To maintain or improve the geopolitical status quo, which includes a $38 billion overall military aid package signed by Obama, APAC has demonstrated that it is willing to smear anti-establishment candidates. Lee was accused of anti-Semitism, for example, for explaining how the phrase Israel has a right to defend itself had been used to justify atrocities against Palestinians. Of course, every country has a right to defend itself. But defending yourself isn't the issue when you're attacking worshipers at al Asqa Mosque, which is what Lee was responding to at the time of her tweets. Even Jewish politicians aren't safe. APAC spent millions to successfully defeat Andrew Lavin in the spring. It even went as far, uh, it even went to war, sorry, against <laughs> America's most popular Jewish politician, Bernard Sanders. Now, of course, anti-Semitism is real. But APAC's involvement in these races isn't actually about anti-Semitism or protecting the interests of Jewish Americans. It's an explicitly pro-Israel lobbying group, not a pro-Jewish lobbying group, and it expressly aims to promote the security interests of Israel. This should not be controversial. It's what their website advertises. But I suspect my saying this will bring some charges of anti-Semitism. Why? Because it is, in fact, an anti-Semitic trope to imply that Jewish people have dual loyalty. According to the World Jewish Congress, anti-Semites allege that the true allegiance of Jewish people is to their fellow Jews and that therefore they are inherently disloyal citizens and cannot be trusted. And casting the Jew as the other, this anti-Semitic trope, which has existed for thousands of years, has been used to scapegoat, harass, and vilify Jews and at times has even led to murder. So because of that trope, I want to be really, really clear. APAC is a lobbying group 
but advocates pro-Israel policies to the legislative and executive branches of the United States. It is not, it, its mission statement is not about protecting the Jewish people at large. Its stated mission is to promote pro-Israeli policies. I'm pointing out that what is good for Israel as a country might not be in the best interest of some American Jews or American goys is not anti-Semitic in and of itself. And yet, and yet, when AOC called AIPAC out for funding both sides of this Pennsylvania race, AIPAC slammed her as anti-Semitic. Her crime, saying, quote, shamefully, AIPAC is working for Republican control of Congress and further destabilization of U.S. democracy. In response, executive director at StopAntiSemitism.org said, quote, the thinly veiled intent behind AOC's tweet to vilify a Jewish organization is crystal clear and further contributes to the vilification of American Jews. AOC's intentional isolation of AIPAC and her failure to call out the numerous bipartisan and left-leaning groups working to keep Justice Democrat candidate Summerlee out of office shows her true colors, the rep continued. Now, in my humble, Gentile opinion, sliding in American Jews as the party being vilified here, when the criticism is of a literal lobbying firm, is a pretty slick move that doesn't show a lot of respect for the diversity of thought among Jewish Americans, including many younger Jewish folks who tend to be more critical of Israeli foreign policy. But putting that aside, if you follow AIPAC's logic to its logical conclusion, AOC is forbidden from talking about how a super PAC is giving on both sides of an election, a super PAC that has donated more than almost every other group because the country it represents was established as a Jewish state. All these super PACs with their unlimited independent expenditures allowed by Citizens United are anti-democratic. They allow rich elites to buy and sell candidates, kill popular policies, and have more power than your measly one vote. And for all the crowing about saving democracy Democrats have been doing lately, this is an issue they should linger on a little longer. Campaign finance reform, after all, has bipartisan support. Elite lobbying groups like those that represent banks and pharmaceutical companies are putting the thumb on the scale of our elections, killing populist candidates who might vote for, say, a wealth tax, lowering prescription drug prices, or legalizing marijuana. It's a big club, and you're not in it. And until the bottom starts to band together against the top, regardless of religion, race, age, or sex, nothing is going to change. So you have to ask yourself, how comfortable are you with the status quo? Hmm. So before we get into the discussion, Hill TV producers reached out to APAC for comment, and they directed us to these tweets. In response to a tweet by Ilan Omar, we proudly stand with the overwhelming majority of the Democratic Party that backs a strong U.S. alliance. APAC works to elect pro-Israel candidates, including Democratic leadership and half the Progressive Caucus. We oppose Summer Lee because of her dangerous views on the U.S.-Israel alliance. APAC and our two million grassroots members proudly support progressive candidates, including 148 Democrats this cycle, who don't check their values at the door when it comes to standing with Israel. Yeah, I think that that statement kind of says it all. It is an expressly, expressly pro-Israel group that is, in fact, working to defeat a lot of progressive candidates who see progressivism as linked to also being progressive for the interests of Palestinians. And there's no reason that those interests have to be against each other. A lot of people are obviously very strongly hoping for a resolution to the conflict in the region that benefits all parties involved. But the idea of criticizing APAC's involvement when they're clearly trying to go after progressive candidates who articulate that there's a balance that needs to be struck here and we need to be able to support Palestinian interests as well, and disguising that behind this kind of these claims of anti-Semitism where there isn't any is a real problem. Yeah, I, I guess I would say I, I mean, is this deception, though? I mean, they, they are, it's the American Israel Public Affairs Committee, right? That's what it stands for. It doesn't represent itself as a group for, as like a, a Jewish advocacy group. It's a, it's a group that explicitly wants stronger ties between the U.S. and Israel um, that supports the funding we give to Israel. I do not support that. Um, you know, that's what they're doing. I 
that's, they give money to candidates yeah, uh, who support that aim. I yeah, don't of like. Of course, but when they attack when when they attack a candidate on the basis of them being anti-Semitic, when the real issue is that they don't like the candidate's policies toward Israel, that's where the slippage occurs because nobody wants to vote for an anti-Semitic candidate, and so they get a lot more traction out of saying, "Don't vote for Summerlee; she's an anti-Semite." Don't vote for um, Nina Turner; she's an anti-Semite. Than if they say, "Don't vote for Nina Turner; she advocates for Palestinian rights." Do they call Nina Turner an oh, anti-Semite? Oh, they there were there were scads of advertisements calling uh, Nina Turner an anti-Semite. Mm. Just like there's these attacks that have gone after AOC simply for calling out APAC's involvement in this race. And the argument is, well, why isn't AOC calling out all these other groups? APAC's one of the biggest spinners in this race. And also, this is the first time APAC has gotten involved um, in a general election between a Republican and a Democrat after also having weighed in in the Democratic primary. Look, I so what are the political incentives here and how should voters respond? This is the, the, real, the real issue, the broader lobbying question. How should voters respond to the fact that in our democracy, big moneyed groups are weighing in to both pick the primary candidate and when they didn't like the primary candidate selection, switch to the other side of the aisle and try to make sure that the candidate doesn't win by supporting the person on the other side. That seems like to me fundamentally anti-democratic, and it's something it's, it's an exaggeration. Dem Democrats have done to help pick 100%. the more MAGA candidate in the in the 100%, race. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And look back at the day; it was people like John McCain who were advocating for campaign finance reform. This, this used to be something at the front front of mind for a lot of Americans, and just completely went out of the window yeah, post Obama I, era. I'm not a I'm not a major fan of. I, I feel like the campaign finance reform it, it feels like a magic solution, but the most entrenched and powerful lobbying effort find ways the smart then then the very insidery insidery people find some way to get around the structure you erect like the super PACs PACs that whole thing is a creation of right the, the McCain Feingold era campaign finance stuff which then most of that got stricken down by the Supreme Court anyway but we just we just created an entirely new alternative you you, you categorize your money and your advocacy as different thing you're 501c3 instead of 501c4 etc etc so on and so forth it does. It seems like, especially given the wide latitude our Supreme Court believes that money counts as speech, yep. it does not seem possible to me to separate money from politics. You can make politics less appealing for moneyed interests to participate in by having the government, by having there be less at stake. That would be my solution. Well, I mean, I do think by limiting the government's power. I would disagree that if our government was gonna, wasn't going to give tons of money for Israel's defense, then there'd be less reason for APAC to get involved in these races. Well, no, I think that the part of we the can reason cut off our foreign donations. Well, I think I mean part of the reason that we do give so much money to Israeli defense is because of APEC. They're, they're they're effective. They're doing their job. But I do think that the bigger issue here is that there are campaign finance reforms that we can get into. We don't have time to get into them today. But people shouldn't treat this as a fait accompli. They should be pushing back against these corporations, lobbying groups, etc., who are frankly undermining democracy at least as much as anything that's, that uh, Donald Trump is being accused of at the moment. Uh, we'll have more rising right after this. Stay tuned.